Good morning, slaves. When I'm in Rochester and I want to see burning cop cars, I watch Rochester in the Media, home of the motherfucking resistance. Statements to the officers, quote, these are my friends, what's going on? Her statement heightened the officer's concerns that she had some type of affiliation with these gang members. And being very abusive. So this man has already proven to the world that he will violate people's civil rights. He should not be sitting on a panel to reform the police department or to consider how to let people complain about We need 
need to investigate and we need a commission that is a civilian that has no connections with the authorities or the police. We need justice for this man. We need justice for our community. Justice that means jobs. Justice that means that we need a, not only a civilian review, but a community control of the police. That's what we need is a community control of the police. As much as the people want jobs and housing and health care and food on their table, we also want accountability of the police. My name is David V. A lot of people may not recognize me. I've uh, spent the last 50 years exposing the corrupt Rochester, New York Police Department and their long history of abusing and murdering innocent people. Hanging black men did not have to die at the hands of a white, trigger-happy, murdering, cold-blooded cop named Randy Book. You know what's sad? And I want any media that's here to turn around just to a 180 and look at the city officials right out the door right now of the city hall. The hall of the police. The crack lady people and the left. And I always hate to bring out the race, but race has something to do with everything. And it saddens me that there's a black man inside those two bars right now that I've been observing for the last 20 minutes of some years. And he's laughing. An African American male in the city of Rochester, New York, who is laughing at our cause here today. And let's break it down real quick. What is our cause? Our cause is that we're calling for answers. It doesn't matter what organization you're with. You don't even have to be in an organization. If you're a living, breathing human being in the city of Rochester, you should be perturbed and sickened and disturbed with what happened at 181 Columbia Avenue. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're not, the next time that you, as a citizen of Rochester, New York, call the Rochester Police Department for assistance, you may be calling a trigger-happy ex-Marine gun hall, ready to hurt something, ready to kill something in your house, like they did to Hayden Blackman. I came to the real estate a long time ago. My father, Larry Barra, marched on these same streets in the mid-1980s. We're talking about just over a quarter century ago when Calvin Green was gunned down. In the 80s, 30-year-old Calvin Green was shot three times at close range and killed by Rochester Police Officer Gary E. Smith. Green was unarmed. Less than two weeks later, a grand jury cleared Rochester Police Officer Gary E. Smith in the killing of 30-year-old Calvin Green. An innocent man, how did the fool stay scared because he had some issues on arms? Shot multiple times, killed. At the time, those that are from Rochester will remember Howard Reddick, the DA, justified. And let's talk about Justified real quick since I got the, the bullhorn here. Justified. They love that word. But you know what? It said on uh, Park Avenue in Girton Place about nine years ago, a young man named Craig Hurd. On June 10th, 2002, 14-year-old Craig Hurd was driving a stolen car in Rochester's Park Avenue neighborhood. RPD officers cornered Hurd on this dead-end street. He was shot twice in the head and killed by officers Serge Savichev and Hector Padam. Heard an honor roll student at Charlotte Middle School was unarmed. On July 11, 2002, a grand jury cleared Rochester police officers Hector Padam and Serge Savichev in the killing of 14-year-old Craig Heard. Lost his life again to two trigger-happy 
Rochester, New York cops, David Pandan and Serge Savagev, who shot him each one time in his head. A 14-year-old boy who made the wrong choices, who hung out with the bad, kind of, I'm not going to say bad, but ill-influenced Ill youth, and they stole a car, but he was scared. Like the late Reverend Gray said, he was scared on a dead-end street. Scared. Unarmed. And guess what? Not only did they kill him, but the next day, on the corner of Norton Street and St. Casimir Street, a white, that's right, a white, and I'm making a point here, 20-something-year-old young man, high on huffing. You know what huffing is? When you inhale spray paint cans. It's really popular with a lot of people, especially on the West Coast. He took off when the police came. He hit several police cruisers, including state troopers, sheriffs, RPD. He hit a lady at an intersection, an innocent lady going on her way to work. They chased him for over 25 minutes to the county of Wayne, Wayne County. Guess how his ended? Guess how this case ended? It ended with road spikes and him learning his lesson and going to jail. But a young African-American male in the city of Rochester lost his life, like Bob Lansbury, who ridiculed him. Some in our community added insult to injury with their mean-spirited and racist comments against Craig Hurd and his family. This letter, written by Bob Lonsberry of WHAM Radio, was left at the street corner memorial for Craig Hurd on Park Avenue and Girton Place. In the letter, not only does Bob Lonsberry wrongly blame Craig's parents, saying that there were no values, no love, but he also states that Craig was raised like an animal, cursed from birth. In one part, he writes, Craig was genetically a man, but socially a wolf. And he goes on to say that young Craig wasn't loved from birth. Lonsberry's statements, they are groomed as predators from their very earliest years, shows his racist views. Lonsberry's comments are mere assumptions later proven wrong. He knows nothing about Craig Hurd or his family. Bob Lonsberry's statements are meant to be hurtful, Comments such as bang, bang, dead as hell, referring to the RPD shooting young Craig twice in the head, are repeated throughout the letter. He refers to the Hurt family's genuine pain over the loss of their loved one as crocodile tears. Bob Lonsberry, who people in the city need to start waking up to who Bob Lonsberry is. A racist who makes a morning drive every morning from Mount Morris, New York, from Rochester, New York, and injects his sick and racist rhetoric over our airwaves and divides our city every single day. You know what? I don't know why I do it, but I always go on his website just to see what other sick stuff he's up to. And I just got done half hour ago before I left my home reading his latest comment. His latest comment is F-U-B-O which stands for, fuck you, Barack Obama. That is who, who we have every morning poisoning our airways and supporting cops like Randy Book. Like he said about Craig Hurd, bang, bang, dead as hell. He joked about young Craig Hurd slumping over the wheel of the Dodge Stratus that he was driving. The RPD is corrupt. And it's got a long history of corruption. In 1984, Alicia McCullough, with a knife in her hand, in a domestic dispute, was executed by a white officer also. 21-year-old Alicia McCullough, daughter of then Executive Director of Action for a Better Community, James McCullough, was gunned down by Rochester Police Officer Thomas L. Whitmore. According to one neighbor, after having heard one shot, he looked out his window and saw Officer Whitmore standing over McCullough's body. He then witnessed Officer Whitmore firing a second shot into McCullough. Less than three months later, a grand jury cleared Rochester Police Officer Thomas L. Whitmore in the killing of 21-year-old Alicia McCullough. You know what I read the other day? I read about how the New York Police Department became furious at a state assembly legislative act where they wanted to introduce 
a bill that was a, a, a no-kill bill, which basically would force the police to shoot, to wound, or to stop, but not to kill. And the NYPD was livid. They couldn't believe it. Why? Because they love to kill. They, they, Officer Book was not concerned with stopping hating black men. The thought, I assure you, the thought did not cross his mind. He shot at what the police are trained to shoot at, ladies and gentlemen, which is called center mass. Center mass is that part of your body just above your waist and just below your neckline. Why do the police choose this spot? Because they know that the shot will be fatal. It's sad, but I guarantee you this. Has that been a white man? Had that been a white man holding that knife, he would be recovering right now with a good shot wound to the leg. He would be alive right now, not shot five times and hit three in front of his family, in front of his own stepson, who punched him in the face and disrespected his household. Minutes earlier when the police came, the Rochester, New York Police Department is corrupt. And it's a joke. Internal affairs is a joke. Explain to me how Officer David Joseph can violate a man named Theodore Laurier's rights in 94 and then do it to me in 96 and in 97. Explain to me how his brother, Nick Joseph, who you guys recognize the name, abused me, beat me, and falsely arrested me in retaliation for me videotaping David Joseph abusing a black motorist during a traffic stop. Explain to me why across the street I want a federal lawsuit against Joseph brothers, David and Nick. Explain to me how Theodore Loria won his lawsuits. And then explain to me why are they rewarded with bad conduct? David Joseph was promoted sergeant of the Rochester Police Department after he beat me, after he falsely arrested me and my brother, after he kidnapped, he kidnapped, he kidnapped a man out of his house. He crossed jurisdiction lines from Rochester into another town. The stuff that I would do 60, 70 years behind bars, he did it to that man right there. He did it to that man. And he got promoted after they walked out one after the other when the federal jury, mostly white, just one black man on my jury, convicted him, or found him guilty, I'm sorry, because it wasn't a criminal trial, found him guilty of multiple civil rights violations. And Nick Joseph, what happened to Nick Joseph? We know what happened to him. Nothing. Internal affairs didn't do anything. What happened to Nick Joseph? You know what happened? He was, he was able to transfer to the Greece Police Department with nothing on his record. Are you kidding me? This is a guy who across the street in a two-week trial, even Judge Siragusa was shaking his head because the guy was a scumbag. And he was found, he violated 16 of my civil rights. How can you even violate that many rights of a citizen? And then walk out with an all-white jury except one black person saying, this guy's a piece of trash, he shouldn't be on the force. So how do you get a job with Greece? How do you get a job with the Greece Police Department, ladies and gentlemen? And then, eight years later, you're high on coke and you're drunk out of your ass and you're at spenders all night drinking with women and sniffing lines, huh? and you're doing an eight ball, and you get behind the wheel of a car, and you're running to an innocent African-American woman who was pregnant, and you send her into premature labor. Explain that one. And explain how David Joseph, who has more lawsuits against them that have been won and or settled, by the city of Rochester. Explain how he 
It's promoted to a sergeant. I'll tell you what, here's the thing. Like Randy Book, the RPD wants people on the force that don't have emotions. Write that down. They want trigger happy, cold blooded, marine mentality, shoot to kill, ask questions later, let a bunch of black and white and Spanish people duke it out later in a city hall meeting. I don't care. I'm shooting. I'm an RPD and I'm shooting. That man's got a knife. I don't care. I'm shooting. And I'm a killer. And guess what? He killed him. And guess what? He's right. You got a bunch of people pissed off about to go in the meetings. And Mr. Blackman is dead. Explain that. And while you're at it, explain to me why a white man is alive with road spikes thrown out. And why a black boy is dead. Okay? And why Alicia McCullough is dead. And while you're at it, explain to me why Calvin Green is dead. And here's the thing, and I'll pass the mic. You know what? All the victims I just named are black. And all the cops I just named are white. So the police chief immediately condones this 